Okay, so this lecture, um, we're going to talk about something is called differential form. We have done tensor algebra, right? And we're going to study some special tensor called differential form. So this lecture, is, there's going to be lots of definitions. And those definitions is as a preparation for our future lectures, all right? So just pay attention to those definitions and kind of understand and picture those definitions so that in the future lectures you won't get lost okay so before that let's just start with some simple ones so we have a vector then we call it a tangent vector to r n at x is something element in forms of this okay so if we define this the addition of these two tangent vectors to become this so v is v is an element of rn okay v is an element of rn so like this if we define their addition to be this and the scalar multiplication to be this then a form of vector space called tangent space to rn at x and then we denote it at this so t stands for tangent at x and all those tangent vectors are in rn so it's called tx rn okay so here's a, like a little diagram so we have x in the form and all the blue vectors right all the those are all the v's the set of all blue vectors is basically essentially the cartesian product of x and rn right because we write it in forms of this well we, we just we use this symbol to kind of emphasize its meaning. It's a tangent vector, okay? And we keep going. So we have a function defined on real open interval to Rn and it's class CR. And the velocity of, we define the velocity of gamma corresponding to the parameter t to be equal to this tangent vector. So the tangent vector at gamma t and the corresponding like the vector is the derivative of gamma at t okay so this is an element right in the gamma t and because it maps to rn so this of course it belongs to rn okay so here comes a more general definition so we have a a is open set it's open either in RK or HK, and it is a class of CR function given x so that we denote that the output at this point x is equal to p, right? And then with this alpha being defined, we denote this alpha star, this alpha star, this function takes each tangent vector at x and rk okay so you're given x and a and this function takes this elements into here so this p is equal to alpha x all right so we denote this we define this function by you're given this and is equal to p which is equal to alpha x and the corresponding tangent vector is equal to this and this observe this is directional derivative of alpha at x with respect to t uh, with respect to v right so this thing it belongs to rn so this is called the transformation induced by alpha so here's a there's like a picture here here's a picture here so in the, in the text, right, it says that the chain implies that this vector, xv, so if we consider this function, right, if we consider this function, corresponding to parameter t. So this is d of x, v, right? Here's our v, here's our x, here's our v, your x is our v, right? And it maps to alpha x and d alpha x times v which is this curve 
the directional derivative with respect to this. So it might be look like this. Okay. All right. And, and then after, after that, we have a property of this mapping. So for later use. With a open rk or hk, so it basically in summary is is basically this formula, okay, and here are like the initial conditions that must be satisfied. So is a class cr b open such that contains the image, yeah, and so this is a class cr, and we define this, okay. So we just let y equal to alpha x, z equal to beta y. Now we just consider, we just compute them. So this becomes this, right, by definition. And for here, we use chain rule, it becomes this. Right, you change alpha x to y. And you pull up beta star, right, by the definition, you pull up y and this vector, right? And what is y? You write, y is basically alpha x, right? So this whole thing can again be written as this. So here, here, right? Just basically, right? Basically the same. Okay. And now we're gonna move on to something more general. Before that, there's like a diagram, okay? It's a diagram so you can memorize it or like kind of picture this so alpha goes to a to b beta goes to rn so this is their their composite right and this is again rk to rm to rn and this is alpha star right so tx and then alpha x yeah. alpha x which is y and then beta y right z is beta y so here's like the diagram Okay, okay, now we're gonna move on to something more general. So, if A is an open set, F maps from this to this, and we call F is we define F to be a tangent vector field in A so that F is continuous, and for any x, Fx belongs to this tangent vector. Okay, so it's basically something like this. Right, you map x, you take x and you map to x fx. So fx is some function that takes a into rn, right? Okay, so more generally, let m be a k manifold. We pick a p and we choose a coordinate patch about p and we let p equal to alpha x. So now we define the tangent space to m at p, the tangent space to the manifold at the point p which is being defined to all this element for V and RK, okay? So, alpha star XV. Remember alpha star XV right here, right? So XV, it maps to P, right? It maps to P. And the course, like this vector is basically this one, right? So, <coughs> Is the set of all such v, okay? And we are we is denoted by this. So at point P and the manifold, there's like stands for tangent, and this is basically the function alpha star takes under this set, right? Takes all those sets, right? V and R K, right? So basically, it's the image set, and here we denote this is a linear subspace of this because here's the here's the argument here's the argument so we know those span rm and this is spanned by those functions right because the Derivative is a linear function, so right. So this space is spanned by those those elements, those vectors, and those are essentially the row, the columns of the derivative. 
the Jacobian matrix for j from 1 to k. And we know that the rank is equal to k, which means that the columns are all independent, which means that they span it and they're independent, so they are the basis. Okay, so this is a linear subspace. Okay. And we define Tm to be the set to the union of all of all tangent space. So we have so for each point we have a tangent space on the manifold and we take their union of on all points on the manifold. And such set is called a tangent bundle of M. And for F that maps from a manifold to the tangent bundle it's called a tangent vector field. Okay. <coughs> Just to get you guys to know, understand why we're we doing. So we let A open Rn. And then we're gonna define something called uh it's called forms. Insert fields. So we define as usual open set and we the omega is a K tensor field NA. What we mean by omega is a k tensor field n a, which means that omega is a is a function. It takes elements n a. And it maps to this space. Okay, so this is our vector space. So this is our v, this is l k v. Okay, this is our vector space. So it maps. It takes a vector and it maps to a k tensor. Okay, so omega k x is a tensor. Now, for each x belongs to A, there's a function, right? This is a function such that it maps k double of vectors and this into R, right? So given a k double, we can write this output as this. Those are the k tuples, and each of them belongs to this space. And here we made a requirement. We require the function pi, right? It takes n plus one value to real numbers such that, so pi here x and v on the vk is equal to this output, is equal to this output. So we define this function. We require this function is continuous. So if pi is CR, if this function is CR, we set omega as a tensor field of class of CR, right? And if omega alternates, right? Okay, this one is not rigorous. If omega x, so if this tensor alternates, If for each x plus a, this omega x is the alternating tensor on this space, then we said omega is called a differential form of order k. So here we can push our definition to more general case onto m and manifold. And we define the k tensor field. This be that for omega p is lk to this space, to this linear subspace, okay? So, and if omega alternates, we call differential form on M. Okay, so we are, we're given this space, right? So we want to talk about their basis. We want to see what are their basis, what, how do you uh, represent each element as a linear combination of basis? So here we back to usual basis of Rn, right? Then those are the usual basis of T, x all right we'll give it x here a 10 to x okay and we define the one form site phi tilde i phi tilde i on rn so that we define like like with if i and j are different if this vanishes if they're the same it maps to one for given already x so those are the elements of one form and we will then go to alternating ones, right? So if they're ascending k double, we define a k form such that it's equal to the wedge product of the elementary one forms and each of the index comes from the i. It's the wedge product. And those are the elementary k form. 
on our end. So here's our definition. We're defining using wedge product. Okay. So here's a here's a note. We know that this is the basis of L1, right? So from 1 to n, this is the basis of L1 TXRN. And it's dual to this, right? And psi tilde i as an elementary alternating tensor on this. So we can say that it belongs to a k, right, of this space, this vector space. Now, as we know, we by direct computation, and also by this, we, by direct computation, it's going to turn x i. We know that these two functions are smooth functions. So c infinity means they're smooth. They're smooth functions. We could verify this. So you say v right, and we have this, and because this is a linear combination, right? Each, each v can write the linear combination of the e1 to en. Yes? And they're linear, right? So the only one remains is like the v, vj. We put out vj and ej. So it's like vj times 1, which is, which is equal to vj, right? So it's vi versus phi i. And for this one, it's just the determinant of x I use, like the wedge product thing. And so now, which means that for any k form on a open and RN, for any omega, the vector space we're using is this one, and the basis we're using is are those bases. So we given omega x belongs to this set, and ascending k tuple from one to n, we define b i x is equal to omega x x e one x e k. So so b i x is a real number, which means that b i is a function. So for each x, right, you have omega x, x, e, y, x, e, k. This i corresponds to those. So each b i is a function. Remember, um, back when we defined the alternating space, each b i is a, it's just a scalar. But this now becomes scalar functions because the elements we're treating with are functions. Right? So, so our components become scalar functions. Now, which means that we can write omega x as some, something like this. Scalar function components of omega. Okay? So here we have a lemma. Lemma? So our lemma states this. Omega is a k form. So this is class of CR if and only if its components are CR. Right. Okay, so this means that omega, the function, the form is CR if and only if it's all its components are CR. So we just write them, so first the proof, we write them as this. And we already know that those are C infinity functions because, right, we, we stated here already. We already stated here because each one you're you're given a determinant of a matrix, but it, it is just basically the polynomial of its input, right? So So like determinants are C infinity functions, they're smooth functions on their entries. Yeah? It's like a justification, and which means that those are C infinity. So if all B R is C R, then omega is C R because it is a sum. If omega is C R as functions of this, now give it any J tuple, K tuple. J is a K tuple. We take E J1, E J K, again X, then this gives this, right? And we know this is CR because we assume that omega is CR function, so it's just CR. And we're done.
right so for all those bi's we can just choose our i and we put it in and we become this di is cr because omega x is cr of input input it's a bit abstract but i think you can handle this yeah 29.3 this is the next lemma so if we're doing two k forms and theta is an L form. So they're all CR, right? So are their linear combination and their wedge product. Okay, so this is trivial. We skipped it. And we just focus on the wedge product ones. We use the lemma and we calculate them. So we write them as those, right? And then we calculate is equal to this. And remember, as in last lecture, and we, when we in the note on the last lecture, right? No, not even the last, like the, the one that performs wet, before wedge product, we talk about alternating space, alternating tensors, right? And we talked about how we calculate alternating tensors, right? We write it in forms of this. Now, so we put x is in form of elementary ones. So it's like we write it in all the, right, all those ones. And now what we do is like we do the same thing. We drop duplicate, we permutate them into ascending order. Then each component is the sum of functions in B, I, C, J. Because you, you arrange those, right? You arrange them. You arrange this, this, like that, that, whatever, but if it either is one, is a negative one or one, and you're taking sum of all those ones. So it's a it's a linear combination, right? It's a sum of functions in form of this. But we assume that omega and theta are CR, which means that they, they are CR by last lemma, right? And which means that if we're taking sum again, then this is CR. And we're done. Okay. So here we move on. We define. So let A is open set. F is a CR function. F is called a scalar field. Also, we just call it a differential form of order zero. So for convenient, we just call it differential form of order zero. So it's the Rn, it takes Rn to R, and it's called CR, which is the differential form of order zero. And we define their wedge product as the usual scalar product in real numbers. And we define the wedge product of F with a K form. We, we, we define they to be commute each other and go to this. So this is a scalar, right? Fx is a real number. And omega x is a tensor. So if you have a scalar times a tensor, then again, you're in this. So so the wedge product, right? You're giving a order k in order l. You're supposed to get order k plus l. Now you get an order k, go to order 0. Now you get an order of k plus 0. Okay? So everything is good. All right? And so here's a little convention we're going to use is that we shall use Roman letters to denote zero forms and Greek letters to denote K forms. Okay, and we'll see you on the next lecture.